Oh. So. You all right there? Making a fire? I am. Everyone was talking about the player. Everyone's focusing on the players. And I understand that. Yeah. I completely understand the players that they drafted. Mm -hmm. However, I would like to discuss more the position. Because I think the positions are more telling than the player themselves. And what they had. I get that. It's end scene. <laughs> I get your perspective on that, right? But uh, we'll take. I'll take the the Knox pick just as an example, right? The Bills released a video showing their draft room, right? Which I thought was awesome. I love that video because mm -hmm. it showed you know a little bit of panic. It showed a little bit of what was happening. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bills tried to trade with Cincinnati. That's what he's referencing right now. <laughs> Cincinnati called to trade. I told you. It's a big deal. We gave, we gave them half their line. <laughs> Click the bell to join Hashtag Nation. You want to try that one again? Thank you. You too. Oh, she's a little spicy. Don't talk about the people until you have officially pulled away. Because the window's still open and they will hear you. Let's go. Let's dance. We've been here. That's what I mean. We've been here for 80 weeks. <laughs> They've messed it up 64 times. I am with you on this. I'm with you on this. However, I'm just saying. She weighed less than you. I'm not, I'm not afraid. Not after these things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we were talking about you were talking about the war room, and I thought that was I thought that was phenomenal. I did see right. that happen and that transpire. Well, but you were going. Yeah. So with the Knox pick, mm -hmm. as soon as they drafted Singletary, and they saw the board start to fall, and saw tight ends starting to get picked out, right? Yep. Beans like we gotta go get Knox. That's it. And I don't even think. It, I don't think it was player. I don't think that's who they loved. I think it was best athlete available. Not best player available, best athlete available at the position. And when you start getting into rounds four and five and six, that's when you start taking best athlete available. You uh -huh. saw them panic a little bit saying, okay, we got some tr we got some picks to trade. Let's go get who we think the best athlete available at the position is remaining now because he's not gonna be there for us in the fourth, right? Well, Knox thought he was going to New England. Well, which, I mean, do you blame him? No, I don't. He has that. <clears throat> Knox has the prototypical size you want for a tight end. Um, yeah, but he's got like less than forty career catches. I don't think he caught a well, touch. I don't think he caught a touchdown in college. Well, here's what. Here's my. Here's the thing about Knox, and we can jump right into this right now as far as the, 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 the draft draftees go. The thing that I like about the Knox pick itself, he's got the. Prototypical size you would want for a tight end. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand that. He was not the number one option in that offense. You had Brown and Metcalf mm -hmm. there, okay? So, him transitioning to the NFL, it's not going to be a, a shock for him because there's going to be other options that are ahead of him. Yeah. And he's not going to, that's not going to concern him. That's one. Two, he's a former quarterback. Mm -hmm. So he could see what, what Allen sees when he's running his routes. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about it. Um, but the, the thing is, you're a former quarterback. How'd you play tight end? Pretty pretty damn well. <laughs> <laughs> it does make a but I mean, the, I hate you. The fact does remain that when you transition positions like that, a quarterback specifically going to a different position, you do see the field differently than oh a lot God. of other players. It's very, it's, you know, you it, understand it, it the game more. It is very different. Um, and the Bills did that a couple times. Sills is a former quarterback. Do you realize Sills was um, offered a scholarship from USC in the seventh grade? You mean the LeBron James mm -hmm. of football? Yeah. I remember that. That storm that that created. Yeah, you know who else was a beast? Cody Paul. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but he turned out to be five foot six. <laughs> I mean, I guess that doesn't exclude you from the Bills drafting you as being five foot six or five seven. <laughs> I like I, I like that the thought of the Knox pick. I know you had to get a tight end in there. Uh, Croft was probably your insurance policy. The odd man out here is going to be Fisher. Oh because yeah. Because 
okay. And <laughs> they drafted a uh, they drafted a tackle in the second round. Third round, they drafted a tight end. You have you have nothing to fall back on then. No. Well, a crew. If Fisher and Kroom mm-hmm. are both going to battle out for positions, you're asking them to do two very different things, right? So, look, look at the lineup of tight ends the Bills have on the roster. It looks like the old ice hockey game with the, the three different players you could pick. Oh, yeah. And they're all different sizes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you're right. But look, look at what you're going to ask those players to do, right? You're going to ask, like, one of these guys has to contribute in the run block game. Two of them have to contribute in the run block game. Two of them have to be receivers. Knox could. Knox can contribute in the run Croft block can. game. Croft can, right? And so can Fisher, obviously. And Fisher obviously can, right? But Kroom, he's not giving you anything there. No, right? no. But Croft is going to make the roster in, in all likelihood. Kroom still has practice squad eligibility. He does. So that's one of the things that I think is very um, – <clears throat> is lost. Uh-huh. I think a lot of people need to start paying attention to that as far as because a lot of these roster moves, as of right now, everyone drafted as practice squad eligibility. There's probably at least 20 players on the Bills that have practice squad eligibility. Yeah. Uh, Wade yeah. doesn't count against that. He's going to yeah. be your 11th player, but you can only do 10. Uh-huh. Okay. So you got 10 guys that can be on the practice squad. That it, Ford has practice squad eligibility. Sure does. So if we're talking about. So does Foster. <laughs> So does Foster. And McKenzie and um, McLeod. And Ray Ray McLeod. Like basically your entire wide receiver group. Yes. With exception to the two guys you just brought Even in. Even Williams mm-hmm. has two practice squad because he went to CFL. It didn't count. So but, in that respect, if you're if you're juggling a bunch of guys and you're like, okay, how can they keep this many people on the roster? Well, technically they can. They can keep 62. Right. So of the 90 that they have. Right. Not counting weight. But – um, but again, you know, you look at that and you say, "Well, we're gonna we're gonna go into the season, and we're gonna go into the preseason." You know, let's say you're trying to hide Duke Williams from everybody. Duke Williams plays, you know, the plays with the third stringers twice. You put him up with the second stringers for the third game, and then you cut him. You don't give him. You don't give teams any film on him at all. You don't give him anything new because CFL team doesn't help. No, it doesn't. It doesn't help you. Sideline cam of the of the phone. The, the Eskimos. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it just it doesn't help you as much because again the game translates a little bit differently. I understand it's still football, but we've talked about it in a previous episode. The game translates differently. Mm-hmm. It's not the same. So I mean, you might see the Bills get sneaky, sneaky because they got a lot of players, but they're going to want to hide some of these guys. And. If, if I were looking to hide Duke Williams, the easiest way to do that is you, give, you dabble him in a little bit in games and in, in circumstances where it doesn't really matter. You see if he can run block. You throw a couple passes his way. You cut him. I'm sorry, you wave him. You'd be waving him. You wave him. See if he clears waivers. If he clears waivers, congratulations, you got him on the practice squad. If he doesn't clear waivers, well, you try. Got six other receivers you're going to wave. On this roster, yeah. there's lots of guys to pick from. Is, is there? Uh, it's probably a discussion for another day. Is there a possibility you see Duke Williams come on inside and join Croft and Kroom and Knox and all those guys? I don't know if he's physical enough. I'm just talking about because you talk about Kroom not being a force in a run blocking game. Yeah. Even though he took what's his name's head off. That was Logan year. Thomas. Oh, that was Logan. Okay. That was Logan Thomas. Right. Yeah, that that clean out block. Against Miami. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, that's a block that check, once you get up that. off the ground, you like start questioning your life. You're like, you know what? Maybe I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> what brought me to this point in my life? Um, You're like, God, did I leave the oven on? Guys, I gotta go. I think I might have like left the stove on. It's time <laughs> to go. But no, but that being said, what is the difference between Williams and Kroon on the inside running routes? Well, I don't see a big difference. I, I, I see I, I see a pretty big difference because here's here's the reason why. Um, we got a comment before on the Duke Williams video, uh, not, actually recently, yeah. where somebody was saying, um, you know, of course he can get off press coverage. He played in the SEC. So I went back to the Iron Bowl game against Alabama because that. Yep. doesn't get more SEC than Alabama, mm-hmm. right? 
So you go and you watch that. He was not on the field in running situations at all. Oh. So they're running two and three receiver sets, and he's not on the field. So that's telling thing number one. And that was his final season at Auburn. Okay. He's out there with Sammy Coates. <laughs> I know. I know. You brain farted out. But it was Sammy Coates and Duke Williams. He's not out there for receiver on running sets at all. Right? And when he was out there, even when they played him close, they weren't touching him. Not because he was fighting off coverage, because they weren't touching him. They were giving him the outside. They would mm-hmm. take away the inside from him on all of his routes. Yeah. And they were, they, they cut off the inside and say, okay, go ahead. You want to you route the sideline? Go ahead. But I'm not touching you. Mm-hmm. So that's the difference to me, is the difference between Croft and Duke Williams is Duke Williams gives you nothing in the run game because they didn't even try with him in Auburn. It wasn't on the field in run sets. Mm-hmm. And... You're not fooling anybody. Remember yeah. when we had C.J. Spiller? Yes. You put C.J. Spiller on the field and everybody goes, okay, Spiller's going to get it. And he got it 70% of the time when he was on the field. Yes. That's that's what you're doing with the Okay. If you're putting him inside to play that tight end position. That's what you're doing. I don't think it solves anything for you. Well, I was just, like, just give me an idea. you got to beat me up. I mean, I know we haven't driven in a while. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> Sorry. Don't you ever apologize to me that way. Does it make any sense? Why don't we just move Patrick DeMarco to be an H-back? He's not even going to be here. I know. I'm just saying, just to see what you'd say. Yeah, no, he's done. Dun, dun, dun. How many team captains are going to be back? Dun, 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 dun. Let's look at the captains. <clears throat> yeah, Alexander. Captain. Yep. So well, he's, yeah. McCoy. Alexander and McCoy. And even McCoy's on the fence. A lot of people are... Don't do this. I'm just saying. Don't do it right now. That's for later in the week. 